pretty much what we're doing here is raiding every single perk in the game. We're going to do all the survivor perks and all the killer perks. We're going to assign them a value 1 to 5, depending on how impactful they are to a match. Then we're going to average the numbers out and see which number is higher. Basically, the whole point of this is to figure out if you're playing killer or survivor in Chaos Shuffle, which mode is more likely to get a good perk when you randomize. So that'll be sort of a way to determine which side is, you know, more heavily favored. That's the idea. And I wanted to do this live because I wanted to have people in chat help me with ratings because a lot of these are uh, hard to get exact values for because it's very, very subjective a lot of the time. Some of them are not subjective, but some of them are pretty damn subjective. So with the whole ratings description here, Again, these are, it's, it's very hard to actually rate these, but I'm going to go by the impactfulness on a match. Shouldn't there be a detrimental tier? No, it would just be zero for no either. <laughs> like, that would be pretty much it, but even that has uses. Um, so basically we're going by the impact it has on a match. And the, what I mean by that is not like it helps you, uh, you know, not get hit a certain time or something like that. Well, that does have a radiating effect on the match. The important part is whether or not that actually has weight on the outcome of how many people escape or how many kills happen that is the general idea we're going for so for an example um like uh a, a, a three could be like uh adrenaline or something like that adrenaline is a three because you know depending on how often you even get a chance to escape you need to do all the gens you need to be injured and you need to be in a position where the speed boost is probably going to help you so it sometimes does have an impact on the match but it's not always really going to be something that is going to steer the game in a different direction. Uh, something like a five would probably be like Sprint Burst, because no matter what, you're always going to be able to use that perk, and just that's a guaranteed usage every single time. And that usually helps your chases longer. And, you know, that's kind of the... That's kind of the the scale we're going with here. Um, one would be something like, you know, Teamwork Collective Stealth or something like that. So that's kind of what we're going there for. Negatives are impactful, too. Yeah, but I, I just like what, what perks have negative effects? There's like, there's like two of them. I, I can't really think of any other perks other than like no mither. I guess dark arrogance has a downside. Like there's there's very few perks that have a negative effect, and they usually have a pretty decently positive effect too. Like you know weaving spiders has a negative effect, but it's the effect is actually pretty decent. So um, we're gonna go over every single perk in the game, starting with survivor perks, and we're just gonna do a rating. Conspirate has a downside? Yeah, I mean, I, I guess, but we'll weigh those in. I'm saying there's not going to be like a zero rating if it has a downside. That would just be silly. Um, I should probably wait a little bit longer for people to join so we can get more people to give input. Eh, whatever. That's fine. Um, okay. Ace in the hole. Number one. Oh, and he, he even links it too. Ace in the hole. This is just for items. This is very low impact in a match. I would say this is probably a one, right? Uh, I'm giving A's in the hole to one. I, I want to do these kind of fast because we have to get through like 300 perks. And I don't want to spend five minutes here. We'll be here for 24 hours. So might get a good med kit. Ah, it's luck upon luck upon luck. And you have to probably run that with Plunder's Instinct. It's just, eh, no. Nah. I, I think A's in the hole is one. It's a two though. I, I don't agree. I pretty much think it, I, eh, I guess niche scenario usage in a match. If I'm going by my own definitions, fine, fine, fine. See, this is why I need you guys. I guess that does technically qualify. Hey, Ray. All right, fine. We'll, we'll give it a two because yeah, I guess that does qualify. Very niche scenario, but I guess you could loot like a syringe or a stipic and that'd be pretty, pretty nuts. So does niche count will build her alone? I mean, it would be a niche build. So that's, that's niche. All right. We got to go faster than this. Uh, adrenaline. Adrenaline is a three or a four. I can't really determine if it's a three or a four. I I'm going to go with three because it's not very often that it actually has an impact on the match. A lot of the time, even if you make it to end game, you're healthy or something or you're on a hook or like it doesn't even do anything for you. So I, I, I think three is fair for adrenaline. Uh, Next, aftercare. Fuck, what does this even do? <laughs> I don't even know what aftercare does. Um, The orders of the last three survivors are permanently revealed to you. Once any of the following connections are met, we hook them, they unhook you. Isn't that just sort of like a... Oh, permanently revealed. Okay. So it's like bond, but global, but eh. I'd say that that that's a that's a two. It does have a use, but it's bond. I feel like bond is just better. Um, I'm gonna give that two. Alright, moving on. Uh alert. 
Flirt is decent aura reading. Um, I would say that it's yeah. I, I honestly, I, I would say based off the scale, that's probably going to be a four because you're pretty much always well. No, it's how often not not how often do you benefit from the perk. It's how often does it have an impact on the match. That's the important thing we need to keep track of. Just because you see an aura doesn't mean it does anything. You know what I mean? It's great information. Um, if you have comms, I would I would rate it a four, uh, honestly. Um, in solo queue, though, I'd say it's more of a three. I guess we should determine whether this is solo queue or not. I'd say this is probably this should this should be based on solo queue. If we have to have a baseline, I, I don't want to base it around like four mans with comms and shit. I'm gonna say three. Because you always get value from it, but the value is just not super inc incredible or anything like that. Isn't it better without comms? I mean, I guess it's more neutral with comms. Do a rating for solo and whisper out with friends? Nah, that's too complicated. Again, we have 300 perks to go through. This is going to be way too complicated. Gotta do it as simple as possible. Deli's insane survive. All right, we're, we're doing solo queue. This is solo queue. We'll just make that. Uh, I'll make that clear in the description. All right, I'm, st I'm sticking three and alert. Uh, any means necessary. The palette raising potential of this is not particularly amazing. It's it's sometimes useful, but the um, ore reading is pretty nice too. How often is that going to have an impact on a match though? Honestly, like picking up a shack pal eh, shack is usually kicked. Eh, that's, that's, that's probably a two. Definitely not a three. I, I, I'm going to give it a two. I, I think two is fair. The ore reading is nice, and occasionally you could get, like, a really nice... If, like, it's a killer, that can ignore Shack Palette, I guess. It'd be easier to judge if there are two scores. One for odds is getting value, another for actual amount of value. Mm, I'd rather combine them into one. That's going to get too complicated again, too. I, I'm trying to streamline this as much as possible. All right, we got to go. Uh, appraisal. Um, This is probably a one. That's a shitty perk. Um... Autodidact, huh? I would say autodidact is, in terms of having an impact on the match, I, I, I'm gonna give I'm gonna give it a I'm gonna give it a three, because it's not often you actually get to your five stacks, but when you do get to five stacks, it can drastically heal up speeds to an insane degree. So I think that sometimes does have the impact on the outcome of a match because. Yeah, if a killer, you know, you heal somebody in four seconds instead of 16 or something. Two because of luck. I mean, the, the effect is a four, but the luck is like a two. So that's why I'm doing three in my head. I'm, I'm going with three. Um, babysitter. Babysitter is actually pretty damn good for uh, someone getting tunneled, but only if there's a scenario with someone explicitly tunneling and the person that does the unhooking has babysitter. So it's, it takes a little bit to work out, but the effect is pretty strong. Because, you know, 30 seconds of haste is pretty nuts. I'd say it's a 3 or a 4. I'm going to go with a 3 just by sheer uh, nature that I almost never see anyone use this perk. But it is pretty good. Uh, I'm going to give it a 3. Why doesn't Adrenaline 3 doesn't it always come into play? No, you need to do all the gens. You need to be injured and you need to not be on a hook and... Like, this, there's a lot of checkboxes you got to fill to actually benefit from it. Yes, the perk might activate, but how often does it actually change the outcome of a match, you know? Um, back around the player. I'm probably going to give it a, a two now since they nerfed it. I'm just going to give it a two. Uh, balance landing. Um, it's probably a three or a four on the, on an outcome of the match. There's very few maps where you can't benefit from from balance landing. I'm probably going to give that a 4. Some maps have no hills. Well, that's why it's not a 5. <laughs> but it is extremely good when you get to use it. Bardic Inspiration literally doesn't do anything, so it's a 1 right now. <laughs> it's just bugged. Uh, better Together is... Uh... Eh, that's not good. How often is that going to actually impact on the match, though? Actually, in solo queue, all survivors can see the gen. I'm actually going to give that a 2 just because of solo queue. Like, if you're on, like, Midwitch and it's highlighting the gen that you might not be able to see, it does, it, that might actually give some tangible info to your teammates to impact the outcome of the match. So, 
I don't, I don't think it's a one. I think two is fair. Uh, better than new. This perk is terrible. That's a one. I think when it affected gen speeds, it was actually better. But it's only this shit, so it's terrible. Uh, bite the bullet. I'd probably give that a two. Very niche usage, but when you do use it, it's pretty nice. Uh, blast mine. As much as I love it, I'm probably going to have to give it a two. I don't, I don't know if it's a three, guys. I, I, I think it's a two. <laughs> like, what, what does it really do? It, it mostly just makes you laugh at the killer. <laughs> you think even a two is generous? I can't say it never has a use because the delay, it, it does delay the killer. It delays the killer for five seconds and probably a couple more after they kick it. So I'm going to give it a two. It's not, it's not useless. It's just fucking hilarious. Uh, Blood Pact is pretty bad. If they're getting tunneled, it might have a use if you stick with them, I guess. Oh, wait, no, I'm thinking that that's um the uh, teamwork one. Oh, no. No, you do have to be close range for, for Blood Pack, too. Okay. Uh, for solo queue, that's a one. Uh, Blood Rush. I'm going to rate the new Blood Rush. And probably give that a three or a four. What do you guys think? You have to be tunneled and you need to have a, an exhaustion perk that benefits from it, which you would probably use if you had the build. I feel like I feel like that's a three. I feel like it's three. It's still got some requirements, but if you do get tunneled, then you are in, in a position to use your exhaustion perk. It's pretty good. Hard to say. I know this is this is not gonna is exact science, guys. I know it's not gonna be uh, perfectly accurate. Boil over, uh, hot take, I'm gonna say... Eh, no, it's not a one. I would say that's the definition of a niche perk. There are a couple of times it's useful. That Yeah, that is the definition of a two. It's ass, yeah, but it does occasionally in the right position with a fall down, it could actually save you. It's so ass. I'm, I'm still gonna give it a two. Uh, Bond is... Pretty damn good in solo queue. Honestly, I'm going to give that... I'm pretty much going to give that a 5. Oh. I think for solo queue, Bond is just a straight up 5. Just knowing where to not take chases, knowing where your teammates are, that can pin you, uh, tip you off where the killer is as well. You can see them being chased. You can know what gens they're working on. It can let you know what other gens are being worked on. It's just... You're pretty much always going to benefit from Bond every game, even Survivor Friends. It's just... It's super good. Bond causes suicides in game. How does Bond cause suicides? I, I think Bond is legit the first five that we have because it's it's always impactful every single match. Again, solo queue. Circle of healing. I'd say that's a solid three. It creates a really good scenario if there's a three gen killer to have a safe reset area. Like the strength of that cannot be denied. That is super good. But um, it's still a boon. Takes time to set up. So I, I, I think three is good. Uh, Dark theory... I am actually going to give this a 1. I don't even remember the last time I've seen that perk benefit anybody ever. So I'm going to give that a 1. Uh, exponential. Very niche. But when it does have an effect, it's like straight up game saving. So I'd say it's a 2 or a 3. Yeah, like against like twins or Oni or something, it's, it's probably a 3 or a 4. But against other people, it's more like a 2. Yeah, I'd say I'd say a two is fair. If we're going overall, then it's it's probably two. It's going on YouTube. Uh, yeah, I would like it too. Wait, I can do this. Leader. Uh, boon elimination. That's probably a two. Again, in solo queue, that can be surprisingly useful for indoor maps. One, I'm giving it a two. I I can't stress how important letting teammates know where gens are on the map is in solo queue. It's insanely important. The effect is pretty weak, but it will pretty much always give you value. It's a, it's a, you know, it, it's not a, an extremely uh, powerful use, but a good day, Scott. thanks, Benadryl. Appreciate the 30. Um, but in my opinion, it's always going to have, you know, a use. So I think it's fine. That's a two. Uh, Boon Shadow Step. Uh, that's a th indoor map. It's like a four. Any other map, it's like a two. So I think three average is pretty good.
it's underrated. Yeah, it depends on the map, though. It really depends on the map. If you're, like, on fucking Rotten Fields or something, it doesn't, like, who cares? It doesn't matter. But, yeah, if you're, like, on Hawkins or Larry's, it's super good. So I think the average of three is safe. Borrowed time. Um, I would say that fits the definition of sometimes has impact on a match. It's not like as good as it used to be anymore because we have a base kit now. It used to be like a four yeah. or a five. Actually, it used to be straight up a five. Hey, Milk. Oops. Thanks to the 22. I'd say it's a three now. A lot of threes. Uh, Botany Knowledge. Um, wait, why is that not copy that? It's tilting me. Why is that not? <laughs> why did that only copy the... I want the link. There we go. Uh, I'd say it's a three or a four. You know, I'm going to give it a four. You won't use it every game if you're like the one tunneled, but other than that, it's pretty much always good, just no matter what. I guess unless you have a med kit or something, but if you had a med kit, you wouldn't bring botany and vice versa. So I think botany knowledge is just always useful. Um, Breakdown. I would say that is the definition of a niche perk. It can sometimes be extremely impactful, but more often than not, the killer just goes somewhere else. <laughs> I don't know. Now, if you're in like a four-man survive with friends and you all have breakdown, then it's actually pretty nightmarish for the killer. But this is solo queue, so it's not going to happen. I'm going to say two for solo queue. Uh, breakout. Again, that's a pretty niche scenario, but when it's impactful, it's impactful. So solo queue, it's a two as well, I think. Uh, buckle up. Um. Hmm. It's probably a two, right? I'd say it's a two. I would say in, in a group, it'd be like a three, because you could be like, hey, I'm about to pick you up. You're going to go fast. But in solo queue, you can't communicate that, and they'll probably like waste half of their shit. So, uh, built to last, pretty niche. But on a commodious hyper focus toolbox build, it's okay. Four. Whoa, 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 whoa. Four. I was gonna say two or three. Actually, hmm. Because if you do bring it with a toolbox, that will have an impact on the match. Shit. I, I actually, I think you guys are kind of right. If we go by slapping on a really good commodious, that does very often have an impact on the match. Because having a brand new Commodious again is huge. You still need 12 seconds in a locker safety, like 20 seconds on a gen. Um, true, but you can't look at it like that. You have to look at the burst value of the speed that it comes with. You can basically be safe somewhere and generate a new toolbox, and then you can have burst speed in a more dire situation, and that's actually very important. I'd say it's a 3 or a 4. Works with medkits too. I feel like it's less useful on medkits. You can just have charges. You're not going to need to self heal more than like three times in a game. Ooh, this, this one's not super easy, I think. I'm, I'm going to go with three for now. My gut's telling me three. But it's it's like a 3.5. I'm just not doing halves. That's like a 3.5 for me. Calm Spirit. Very niche. Useful against like two or three killers. Pretty shit otherwise. But it, it is insanely good against you know, certain screen perks and shit like that. So I say it's a two. Uh, camaraderie. Nobody uses this in solo queue. Um, I'd say in solo queue, that's probably a one. If there was some like indicator that that, that was happening, then that would be great. But that there is none. So yeah, in combat, it's super strong. In solo queue, it's pretty dog shit. Uh, Champion of Light. I would say this is... Um... How useful actually is it, though? I'm, I'm thinking two or three. Four. No, 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 no way. It's 20% slow. Yeah, it, it like the slow is nice. And it actually makes blinding at pallets worth it. Mm. I'd say how often does that slowdown actually change the outcome of a match, though? That's the important question we have to ask. How often, because you had that slowdown, does, do you now win instead of lose, you know? 
I'm just going to say two. It is useful. That, that's like a 2.5 for me. Uh, chem trap, I'd say, is also probably a two. There's sometimes the killer has to kick a pallet. Like, if you do it on shack, then it's really useful if the killer doesn't match space. But other than that, it's pretty easy to avoid. But yeah, on really safe pallets, it's nice. Um, Clairvoyance... Uh... One or two, I'm not sure. Three. I'd say probably a two. Because the information is not useless. The problem is it doesn't show anyone else that information. It just only helps you. The ones that help everybody see things are like, you know, it's it's more useful. So, uh, Corrective action. Uh, we're going to go with new corrective action. Um... And solo queue, that's that's still a one in my opinion. Now, when you get spicy with hyper focus and teammates and things like that, then it can start being really good. But yeah, right now, that's it's still pretty much a one in solo queue. Counter force, I'd say, um, in the rare scenario, you've got like a pentamento build or something like that. It could actually be very useful. Other than that, it doesn't do much. Uh, cut loose. Cut loose is a two or a three. I'm just not sure. My mind has been broken by cut loose a lot, but all it does is add like you know ten seconds to a chase, which could determine the outcome of a game. But I, I'd say that's not common enough, so I, I'm gonna give it a two. One man, you guys underrate that perk. I think it's decent. I my mind has been broken by cut loose a couple of times. Very niche though, but yeah, it's pretty effective when it happens. Let's lock our windows faster. Hey, if it causes the killer to go to the complete wrong side of a loop and get you that much distance, it's actually very useful. It's trash? Eh, I don't agree. It's not great, but I don't think it's trash. Uh, dance with me. That is um, a two or a three to me. Because when you do get value out of it and the killer like actually straight up loses you... Yeah, that, that's what I'm thinking, dedicated. If you can lose the killer in a chase... This may be a hot take. I'm actually going to call this a three. Because you're pretty much always going to use the perk. Like, you know, how often do you not vault in a game? And given really good pathing and you know how to use it properly, it can really fuck up a killer. And if it does happen, then the killer just loses you. And just losing a chase is detrimental as fuck to a killer. It's su super bad. How often will you lose a killer from that alone? Even if they only confuses them for five seconds and gives you five seconds of W distance, that's still really good. Hey, Nemorot. I, I think that's a three. Thank you for the three months, man. Dark Sense is uh, like two, I guess. The aura reading is okay, but not very impactful. It has a use. Uh, Dead Hard is... I would say three or four. Dead Hard is not a five. There's no way Dead Hard is a five. You will not get successful value out of a Dead Hard every single game, dude. There's no way. I'd say three or four. It's so impactful. It is impactful, but the point is how often will you actually get value from it? Not just when you do get value, what is the impact, but how often do you get value from it? You almost always can. I don't agree. I don't agree. You can always get value from it. Good players can dead hard on reaction to a melee attack. That is physically impossible. It is is it is instant. <laughs> you cannot dead heart in a reaction to a melee attack. You can do it to a lunge. But you cannot dead heart a melee attack in reaction. That is impossible. Oh yeah, uh, on a lunge, sure, sure. Um The only time you're basically guaranteed a dead heart is if you are in the exact scenario where you're about to make it to a pallet and a killer is forced to swing into you to get that. Then it's really good, but it's not as guaranteed as you think. Because, yeah, like, like like I said, there's a bunch of killers that don't give a shit about your dead heart at all. Um, I'm going to say four. I think four is fair. Who doesn't care about your dead heart? Any killer with a one shot? Am I rating this out of five? Yes. Um, 
perk variability between killer powers is what makes this hard. I know, like I said, this it's physically impossible to get this to be an exact science. Uh, deadline is pretty much only for the hyper focus build. It's it's <sighs> yeah, it's probably a one. That's fair. Is this uh, Survivor 2? Yeah, we're, we're just starting with Survivor. We're doing Killer and Survivor. Deception, uh, niche scenario. If it does work, it's really good, but not super often you'll get it. Lower the number is worse, yes. Works once a match, tops, yeah. But, you know, that value can be good. Decisive strike. How often does it change the impact of a match? I would say a couple years ago, this would absolutely be a five. I'd say now it's closer to a three. Probably three or four. There's just so many killers now that can just immediately make up the distance. Very dependent on the killer, I think. Three solo for DS. Yeah, but there's so many killers now. Like, you know, you hit a DS versus Dracula, bat, boom, dead. Like, it doesn't do anything. And they also have to tunnel you, and they also have to not slug you. Like, it's... When I run Decisive Strike in solo queue, I use it maybe one out of ten games. I think four is too high. I, I actually legit think it's a three. Like, it, it's good. This means, you know, sometimes has an impact on the match, which it does. But the killer's not hard tunneling, and they don't slug you. And, you know, you haven't touched anything. You, there's, there's, there's a lot of things that go into it. And even then, if you do hit it, half the killers in the game can just make up the distance or negate that or something like that. So For newbies, it's very impactful. I feel like newbies aren't even hitting the skill check. <laughs> I, I think three is fine. I'm sure you could argue four, and that's okay. But I, I think three is fair. Deja vu. Um, it's not a one anymore. I'd say it's probably a two. Five. Okay, you guys got to remember this is solo queue. This is solo queue. You you can't share solo queue. You can't share that knowledge with everybody else. Six percent progress is fucking nothing. That's like four or five seconds on a gen. It's very tiny. You do always get value from it. I well, I I guess. Okay, fine. I will argue with Chad and upgrade it to a three. I I don't think it's that impactful though, but it it is constant. That's fair. That's fair. Is why I need you guys. Um, deliverance. Now deliverance when you use it is a five, but. You need to not get chased first. You need to get an unhook. Uh, again, this is not at its best. How useful is it? It's how often does it have an impact on the match? See, to me, I think this is more of a three. There's no way it's a five. There's no way. I would say, like, in a comp setup in Survivor with Friends, you can have the dedicated... You know, that they usually set up a dedicated rescuer with, you know, with uh, Deliverance and stuff like that. And that's that's a lot easier. But again, we're, we're talking about solo queue here. You still get value from more, more... Yeah, that's the thing, though. Just because you are able to use Deliverance... How you gotta also uh, ascertain how often is that actually changing the outcome of a match? Just because you can unhook yourself and make, give yourself broken doesn't mean that's not better than just letting a teammate take five seconds to come save you in solo queue. You know what I mean? Again, if you're in Survivor with friends, you can be like, "Hey, leave me unhooked for 49 or 50 seconds, whatever. I'll just deliver, and you guys keep working on gents. That's great." But if you're in solo queue, they don't know you have deliverance, so some guy's probably gonna waltz over there anyway. So, I, I, I'm going to give it a 3 for solo queue. I get, yeah, I agree, West Coast. I completely agree. But for solo queue, I, I think it's a 3. Cut loose is 2 and deliverance is 3. Yeah. That's That seems completely right. Uh, desperate measures. Um, The unhook is actually pretty insane. But... Th th this is a 2 or 3 for me. 
What do you guys think? It can be really, really good with unhooks, but... You do almost always benefit in some way from it. It's just sometimes the benefit is very tiny. I, like, the insane scenario is when you're, like, um... When you're doing an unhook. If you have four injures and you, like, unhook somebody, you can actually get hit, unhook, and then the survivor can phase into you and take the second hit. Whereas normally it's too slow and you're going to go down for a trade, you know? So, for, for the unhook thing, I'm going to give it a three. Because the, the unhook thing is, like, actually insanely impactful. So, look, you won't take hits? Um, no, I, I think I think a lot of players know if, you know, uh, you're getting unhooked and you get hit before the unhook. A lot of people know to try to run and then take a hit for a second. That, that's, that's pretty basic knowledge by now. We're not talking about, like, baby's first DVD game here. We're talking about average, like, solo queue. I don't think it's unreasonable to expect someone to just try to take a hit for a second and then, then fuck off somewhere. I think that's fair. Uh, Detective's Hunch. Um, it's good with, like, a couple of other perks, but by itself... Mm. It does pretty much get consistent value, but the value it has is not impactful, really. I'd say two is fair. Uh, new Distortion. I feel like New Distortion is a two. It's good for anti-chase perks, or anti-chase or reading, but it's certainly worse than it used to be. So I'd say a two is fine. Diversion? <laughs> Hmm, <laughs> five, six. <laughs> I have seen diversions literally win games by the, by itself, but the majority of the time it doesn't really do much. <laughs> I I have to say, memes aside, it's more it's like a two. But it, like one out of twenty times you use it, it it actually just straight up like wins the game for you. But nah, it's it's it is the definition of niche. Uh, dramaturgy. I would say that's pretty much a five, right? You're pretty much always going to get value from it. Whether you need to give yourself an item, or you need to run faster, or you need to kill yourself. <laughs> you can fuck yourself over. Yeah, but a really smart player is not going to... Like, the way you use Dramaturgy correctly, if you're scared... If you haven't recently um, gotten the one-shot or the expose, you use it right as the killer's about to swing. That way, it doesn't matter. E exactly dedicated, yeah. So... If you, if you do it that way, you'll just always benefit from the haste. Even if you get the haste and then get exposed afterwards, it doesn't matter. You just got hit. I think it's a five. Not to mention you could just straight up get, you know, an insane item or something like that, too. Five and a good player, average player four. I, I'm just going to say five because we got to, like, talk about being used to its max value here. I'd say Drama Jersey is a five. Uh, Grace, thank you for the seven months. Empathetic Connection. Um, I'd say that's probably a 3 or a 4. They also buff the heal speed of it too. It's pretty nice now. It's just the one survivor. Well, no, it's whenever someone's injured they can see you. Eh, I'd say 3. Oh, hmm. Honestly, I feel like for solo queue, I might give that a 4. Because... How often, like, do you need to coordinate a save on someone, but everyone's injured and you don't know where a teammate is and you can find exactly where they are? And then you can heal up a lot faster, too. Uh, I don't know. I feel like that information for solo queue is very, very useful. And it's very consistent, too. I'm, I'm actually going to give that a four. I think a three is fair. Well, fuck you. I'm giving it a four. I mean, we're splitting hairs. That's 3.5. Round it up. Um... Empathy is... I'd say that's probably like a three. Five. And what? Just because you can see ores doesn't mean it's going to change the outcome. It's very consistent value. And knowing where injured people are sometimes actually lets you see exactly where a chase is taking place as well and what resources are being used. So that's really good value as well. Um, knowing to where to heal people in solo queue. I I'd say it's a three. You can constantly see Chase. That's a four. Mm, not always. Sometimes killers have one shots or the person. Eh. Mm. Nah, 
I'm still going to give it a three because just because you can constantly see someone's aura doesn't really change the fact that you can't influence that very much. It's not really going to change the outcome of the match too often. It's just nice to know where things are. I think I think four is a little too generous for it. Empathetic connection is better than deliverance. The question is it more impactful and I, I, I don't know. Uh, exaltation. I don't even know what this perk is. Oh, it's Trevor's. Um, I've, I've literally never used this perk before. Honestly, you, you guys tell me. I, I literally have never used it. It doesn't seem good from the description. It's time to kill the power. Creates a rare of your health items next tier. Recharges the item at 25%. Eh. Do it best. All right. I'll, I'll just trust you guys on that one. I've actually never used it before. Eyes of Belmont. Never dense completed the aura of the killer's reveal to a few seconds. Um. That's good information, but. Yeah, that's it's sort of a combo perk. Mind Breaker would counter it as well, but I mean, that's. Eh. But how often does that change whether or not you live or die is, is the real question. Um, yeah, it's just two seconds. It's really not that crazy. I'm, I'm leaning towards two and I... Hi, buddy. You coming to rate things with me? <laughs> All right, two or three. Uh, I'll, I'll let you guys choose. Uh, I, I don't know how I feel about that. I haven't used it before either, so. Two? All right, fine. We'll go with two. Grand scheme of things that's going to affect the outcome by uh, pretty much indistinguishable amount. Uh, fast track, I think, is actually fucking terrible. It does get use... No, ones are for the perks that literally do nothing. It's pretty hard to get a one. That, that That's barely a two, but it, it, it does a thing. <laughs> it has an effect. But one is for things that, like, literally do nothing. I have to be very, very stringent about the ones, I think. Uh, finesse. I'd say finesse is probably a three. There are a couple of times when it'll prevent a hit, which could prevent a snowball, which could prevent, you know, a lot of things happening from there. I don't think it's a four. You have to not be injured. Um, you need to be just the right distance to where the fast vault is reliant on the faster vault to not get the hit. I think it's it's too not consistent value for a four. I feel like 90% of the times I, I get finesse to go off. The killer was slightly too far away anyway to where it wasn't really going to matter. And sometimes you just got a vault, like, without getting the finesse value, you know? I I'd say three is fair. You know, she's pallet 50-50s, though? Yeah, one time. <laughs> um, Fixated. Um, I'd say fixated is probably like a three. You pretty much always benefit from it. Um, surprisingly for stealth, it is, it is pretty good. Whether that's for first, you can think about combos and stuff. I think the most underrated part about fixated is the stealth component. Being able to like walk around a small like rock or something and have enough speed to evade the killer, but not leave scratch marks is surprisingly good. So I, I'd say it's a three. Also, shift tech. Oh, true, yeah. Uh, flashbang. For solo queue, you're looking probably at it like a two. Again, we're not talking about survival friends. I I'd say in solo queue, it's a two. Very rare you get a flashbang save on a random person in solo queue. You have to be right up in the killer's ass. It's good when combo with, like, champion of light and shit, but... Uh, flip flop. You don't get value too often, but sometimes when you do, it's very impactful to the match. 
Not there's no way flip flop is a one. I was thinking two. Because if you do get to use flip flop, it is very impactful. We just literally had a game yesterday where someone randomized flip flop and then I fake Sabo to hook and then they they wiggled because of flip flop. You almost never use it. Uh, impact versus frequency of use. Yeah, you be, uh, in my head, I'm averaging the impact and the frequency of how often you get to actually... How often you get that impact is, is the best way to put it. After solo queue, since you need a teammate to hover nearby. I mean, it's just for a scenario where you're slugged. One in a hundred games, you'll use it. I, I'm going to give it a two, but just barely. And that's because the rare times you do benefit from it, it can be single-handedly game-winning. It's very roll the dicey. But I can't say it never has any tam tangible effect because sometimes it can straight up win a game by itself. Again, very rare, but it's way too rare to get value from it. I understand, and that's why it's rated very lowly, but I, I, I don't know. My gut is telling me I can't give it a 1 because I've seen it win games before. Uh, Fogwise is just pretty good ore rating, honestly. Um, I think it's a 3 or 4. 3 seems fair. It's pretty just consistent good ore rating. It doesn't do much else, but it's just nice always knowing where the killer is. Um, And that can make your next chase with the killer... A lot better and more advantageous to you because you know where they're coming from and shit. Uh, for the people, how often is it actually useful? I don't, and that's not a four. Obviously, back in the day with the broken combo was like a five, but nowadays, it's pretty hard to get value from. Yeah, Bounty, but the thing is, just because you can see the killer's aura, does it actually change the outcome of the match? Two in solo queue? That's fair. The effect is powerful, but yeah, coordinating that in solo queue is pretty rough. Friendly competition. Increase your repair speed and then you'll survive complete repairs with 5% for 75 seconds. That's dog shit. That's a one. Eh, I guess for two people. Eh, but then you have to group up to use it. I, that's... Uh, according to my own description, though, it does has a use. Two people doing gens, five, it saved you basically 10 seconds. Eh. I feel like by my own criteria, I have to give it a two. Even though it seems like a one, it fits the criteria for two. Um. Hardened. After unlocking a chest and blessing a cleansing of totems, press the urge to scream for any cause and instead cause the orphic killer to even... Ugh. That's pretty niche. I guess that's a two. Niche scenario uses in a match. Again, against a couple of killers would be really nice, but... I'd say that definitely tracks as very niche. Um, head on. I'd say that's probably a two as well in solo queue three against like Bubba maybe I don't know <laughs> and solo queue that's probably a two hope um you need to get to end game you need to to me that's like a three or four if you get chased with hope at end game like the killer just loses You hardly make it to end game. Yeah, if that's the thing though, if we're going by solo queue, I, I I'm more inclined to rate it alongside adrenaline. You'll never catch a good player with hope, right? But we're talking about solo queue here, so I'd say that's probably more of a three in solo queue. This is for solo queue, Helheim. With a group, yeah, like hope is a fucking nightmare for killer. But in a random solo queue, you need to make it to end game, which is miraculous alone in solo queue. Then you need to also be in a position where you're getting chased as well. Then the effect is insanely good. I mean, I, I think three is fair. Uh, hyper focus. 
given the correct build and you're very good, in my opinion, that's like a four, but I feel like that's unfair. Yeah, Hyperfocus with the build is, is the best gen perk in the game, hands down. It's not even close. And you will pretty much always benefit from it. Like, if you just start a match with the Commodious Toolbox and you know how to hit skill checks, that shit is like a five. But there's, there's a lot of variables that go along with it, you know, that make it not the guarantee like that. So I'm thinking a three or a four. Actually, solo queue tax. Yeah, yeah. Okay, that's fine. Uh, inner focus of the new one. Never survivor lose the health state or if the kill is revealed for 10 seconds. Uh, that's sort of like empathy with... Eh, it's not great. Uh, it's a two, I guess. Uh, inner strength. Inner strength is pretty good. You do typically benefit from it. It lets you kind of stay out of sight. Lets you heal in a relatively safe area. But it also takes you away from gens for 14 seconds or whatever. And it could potentially set up Pentimento, yeah. Easily a 4. I'm leaning towards a 3 because of Pentimento. And the time spent not healing. Or the, the time spent not doing gens because you're on a totem. Who has Pentimento? A lot of people have Pentimento. What? Only comp players? Fucking what are you talking about? Dedicated. You need to get off your fucking high horse and stop giving things like concrete definitions. It's super obnoxious. Stop. Um, I I'm going to go with three. I think three is fair. You can't always trust your team to heal you. Yeah, that's why it's good. Like, three is good. Killers never run hex builds. Okay, well, I see it, so... I... I, I don't know what you want me to tell you, man. I see Pentimento decently frequently. Yes, five being most useful. Um, Weaving Spiders. I feel like I rate this perk a lot higher than other people. I actually think Weaving Spiders is pretty good. If you do it at the start of a match, it's actually pretty good. Yeah, I'm more inclined to give this a three. I think this perk is way better than people give it credit for. Against like if you're it's against like a wraith or a ghost face, like a stealth killer, being permanent injured actually is a really huge downside. But I'd say for the most part, a good player doesn't care that much about being injured, and you save more time than it took to do the uh, you know the invocation or whatever. On all the generators. Well, on launch it sucked because it took twice as long. It's only a minute now and it saves you more than a minute on gens. This may be a hot take, but I'm giving this a three. I actually think this perk is a lot better than people give it credit for. Even for solo queue. If you get that shit done at the start of the match, you save a lot of gen time for everybody. And it affects everybody too. Other people will pop Jen's way waste time on it within 60 seconds? Shit. That's pretty fast. That's good. <laughs> that means your team's cranking out Jen's. I'd say almost every time I use Weaving Spiders at the start of a match, it's done before the, a single Jen pop. Uh, Iron Will is very, very good. I would say Iron Will might legit just be a 5. I have lost chases entirely because of Iron Will. The exhaustion thing is obviously a downside, but... You control when that happens. I, I think Iron Will is insanely good. It's always been one of the best perks in the game, so... Even, even with the uh, slight nerf. With the exhaustion uh, benefit now. Or detriment, rather. But if you're in Rotten Fields... Okay, then it's not going to do much. <laughs> but still, just the sheer not being able to hear someone on the other side of Shack Wall. Just even little things like that. Even if... You know where the chase is happening. Just not being able to track people through walls is so useful. I'm not, I'm not going to debate. I, Iron Will is a 5. It, it's legit a 5. Uh, Kindred for solo queue is 4 or 5, honestly. I'd, I'd say 4 or 5.
I think five is a little too much because just because you can see everyone's auras doesn't mean like there might have been a guy already coming to save you anyway. Like it might not have actually changed the outcome of anything. But I mean, four is very good. Four is like you very frequently get amazing use from this. So I I'd say four is fair. Yeah, I understand that, feller. Uh, my gut is telling me four. With open handed, it's five. Dude, open handed Kinder is nuts. It also stops another guy from coming. Yeah, but you can see that via the um, the icons. Like, so you don't need that shit anymore. Now, granted, if people are newer to the game and stuff like that, they don't know. But you can tell what people are doing based on the icons. For example, if someone's on the hook, you see tentacle chase on one guy. You see another guy on a generator with a generator icon. You have to go save. Basically, whoever's not being chased and not in a gen is the person that goes and saves. Like, you don't even need Kindred for that. But it's it's nice to see it, you know. It requires solo queue survivors that aren't dumb. I'm not talking about dumb survivors. I'm talking about solo queue. Good players playing solo queue, basically. We can't base anything off of dumb players because then fucking everything is bad. <laughs> then Dead Heart is terrible because they're dead hearting in a corner. You know what I mean? We can't base anything like that. So I, I, I think Forrester. Um, leader is... It's okay. I I mean, the heal speed is nice. Like, the door speed sometimes is useful. It's a, it's a two or a three for me. It's, it's mostly the unhooking that I think is really nice. And the little mini wake-up feature, too. Oh, yeah, it's got the lingering effect, too. I forgot about that. Two, because it requires grouping up. It's a fair counterpoint. It, this is like a 2.5 for me. I've been rounding up my 0.5, so I'll, I'll give it a 3. Um, Left behind. In solo queue? I, I, I would give it a 2 in solo queue. Just because solo queue. <laughs> because you're typically going to be in a hatch scenario in solo queue pretty often, but that's about it. That is very niche, but useful when it happens. Uh, Light-footed. Um, we all make jokes about no sound, but it's actually pretty damn useful. Um, when does it go away? When you're injured? When you vault, I think? When, when you vault, okay. That's pretty good. I hate when people run this perk when I'm playing killer. Hate that it doesn't work while injured. That's why it's not higher than like a three. Because if, if it worked while injured too, that plus iron will, it would be like a four. Because you, you would just be unable to track people ever. Evolved in a chase considerably early, so sometimes it does nothing. Yeah, that's a good point, too. I don't know. This one's tough. This is like a 2.5 again for me. I'm going to say 3 because it's still probably always going to give you some value, even if you lose it pretty quickly. Uh, Lightweight. Lightweight is a 2 or a 3 for me. It's actually surprisingly decent for, like, tripping up the killer. You typically don't lose the killer... But it's good for, like, uh, wait, did he go this side or not? It, like, it delays chases a little bit. You guys think three? Oh, yeah, 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 that's fair. I feel like I'm more like 2.5, but again, that's rounding up. Shit, I should have I had decimals. It's too late now. Yeah, because if the killer loses you for even five seconds, that's an insane distance gain. Uh, Lythe is pretty much going to be f five, right? Well, no. I feel like Lythe is a four. You don't actually always get to benefit from Lythe. It depends where the killer initiates the chase. A lot of times you have to vault and you're lithing in the wrong direction. See, that, that's what I'm thinking, Wes. Like, it's still four, like, which is very good. But it depends which direction the chase starts. And if the killer knows you have life, they can manipulate the chase in such a way that you have to use your life on kind of a shitty vault. I guess they can slow vault, but then that's kind of... Eh. I'm going to give it a four. I think four is fair. It's pretty pretty much always useful unless the killer knows you have it and then they can kind of manipulate the chase to make you not get such good value from it. So it's still very, very good. Um, Low profile. Um, It's a two or a three. 
It's not a one. The fact that it works uh, when everyone's downed. I originally thought this was a perk that works only when everyone's dead. But it actually works when everyone is down. So if you're like the last survivor and everyone's slugged by an Oni or something, you actually are basically undetectable. But that's it. That's the only time. I think that's the definition of a two. That is a niche scenario where it could be very useful, but pretty niche scenario. Lucky fucking break. That's a four or five for me. I know you guys know my thoughts on Lucky Break. I think it's one of the best perks in the game. I think Lucky Break is insane. Again, there's it's a... Just say but, uh, say but. Hey, uh, Splinter, thanks, man. Appreciate the 28. There are a couple of maps where it's not going to give you any value. Like, you know, if you're on, like, Blood Lodge or um, Ormond or something. Like, Blood Lodge, Ormond... Um, I'm trying to think of, like, the wide open maps. Like, Rotten Fields, for example. It's not going to do shit. But... And pretty much any other map with some line of sight blockers, it can just, you can escape chase against the best players in the game. How many times you see Lucky Break actually do its thing? Never, because if they use Lucky Break, I don't know where they went. <laughs> yeah, it depends where the chase starts dedicated. If you're in middle, you can probably do something, but... Again, we're basing this off of good players in solo queue, so... I'm actually going to give this a four. A killer just straight up losing you in a chase is... It's probably the worst thing that can happen. Because good killers can down you pretty damn fast, but... If the best player in the game doesn't know where you are, they can't down you, so... It was better. I think it was a five when Green and were boosted, but... Didn't they also make it, um... Easier to recharge? I forget the patch history of Lucky Break. I'm giving it a four. I'm especially biased thinking that perk is good, so whatever. Um, Lucky Star. That perk is still really bad. It's like slightly better now. Oh yeah, I forgot it's got Aura Reveal too. Eh. How useful is that Aura Reveal though? Who, who cares? <laughs> you pretty much need Quick and Quiet with it too then. Hmm. I'm still inclined to give this a two. I don't think I've ever seen anyone get lucky star value ever. Now, granted, I, I can't. This is the new version, so I can't really, like, visualize that. But, uh, eh. I'm giving it a two right now. Fight me. Uh, made for this. Oh. This were just some time ago. That would be like a... There you go. <laughs> um, current made for this is... I know when you combine it with Dead Heart, it's pretty nice. Against killers like Legion, it's super nice. Against like Deathslinger, it's really nice. The Endurance is really nice. But the actual haste effect is much lower now. I I, I think unfortunately it's a two now, yeah. Combined with OTR, it's insane. Yeah. It's good for getting tunneled. But it's... Eh, I don't know. Going off my personal experience, I haven't seen someone benefit from Made for This since they patched the perk. So I'm I'm going to have to say it's a two. Just based on my personal experience with, whoops, encountering it. I don't tunnel. I, I mean, I guess, yeah. Whatever, I'm making, the, I'm making this, so it's obviously biased towards me. <laughs> yeah, it still gives the endurance on heal. Eh. Fuck, I kind of want to go to three now. Because the, the endurance could actually be pretty game winning. If the killer doesn't expect that, endurance is actually pretty good. I'm actually going to give us a three. Five is the highest. Metal of Man. Um, in solo queue, that's legit a one. It literally causes you to lose games <laughs> most of the time. You get it for 999 in people's hearts. <laughs> Dark Magician, thank you for the 500 bits. I appreciate that. And so, okay, this is terrible. Absolutely terrible. Uh, Mirrored Illusion. I can't say it has no use. On wide open maps, if you see someone working on Agenda Killer, might waste 10 seconds getting closer to it. I think that's a definition of a niche use. But it's not. It doesn't have no use. 
Moment of glory. What the hell is moment of... Oh, it's again, Trevor Perk. I, I haven't used any of Trevor's perks, can you tell? Um, what is this shit? Oh, this is the auto heal. This is the auto heal perk. Uh, you you kind of have to combine it with a rummage perk. It's an auto syringe, yeah, but you have to combine it with a rummage perk or you're going to spend half the match just running around opening chests. <laughs> Uh, yeah, just bring a fucking syringe. I don't know. It's a cool effect, but I think that's more of a two. If you were to just get that in, in Chaos Shuffle, you're not going to really do much with it. No Mither. Surprisingly not a one. I'm actually going to give No Mither a two. Detective David Dunn is a fictional character from the Saw film franchise portrayed by Danny Glover introduced in Saw 2004. He is a police detective investigating a series of crime scenes linked to the same murderer that is revealed to be the Jigsaw Killer and serves as one of the film's protagonists. Thank you, Hiken. <laughs> Thank you for that. <laughs> don't think it's a two for solo queue. The, re the only reason I don't write, uh, uh, rate it A1 is because of the combo potential with, you know, weaving spiders, resilience, things like that. But importantly, it forces the killer to pick you up which actually has more of an impact on the match than you would think, depending on who you're going against and what the current situation is. Basically, not letting the killer slug can be a crucial moment in a lot of games. So, that's why I give it a 2. But yeah, not very good. Uh, no one look behind. Maybe a hot take, but I feel like I want to give it a 3. The unhook speed is insane. Like, dude, this with desperate measures, like, it can single-handedly get someone out that was not going to get out. And obviously the haste is really nice, too. I think it's actually a three. Also requires endgame, which is why it's not higher. I'm sort of like, all the endgame perks, like, you know, adrenaline and all that, I'm kind of like putting them all at threes. Is that really winning the game? Y yeah. I'm saying, like, there might be a scenario where if you didn't have this perk, you wouldn't have been able to get the, the unhook safely. And you're at endgame, and now you all can all get out. I, I think it's actually a very good perk. Definitely underrated. Object. Um. I mean, you technically... Well, actually, no, you don't always get value from it. If it's a stealth killer, you just fuck yourself. <laughs> I'd say it's a two or a three. Good against or reveal builds. True, it, it it gives you information as as well about what perks they have, which is pretty nice. Weave attunement is pretty common right now too. I think just for sheer consistent value throughout the entire game, letting you get good positioning, that's probably a three. Off the record, um. That's a four or five, I think. That's the thing. You don't even need to get tunneled for it to retain value. You still have the, um, like, the, the silence. You, you still get the benefits from it. I, I'd say that in solo queue, that's, that's probably a five. Oh, yeah, the aura blocking, too. Yeah, off the record is just, it's just always very good. Uh, open-handed... I mean, randomizing it in Chaos Shuffle, it's a fucking zero, <laughs> but when you combine it with Kindred. So, I, I've been doing these in my head. The Like I said, the entire point of this video was determining in Chaos Shuffle who the mode favors. And if you get open-handed, it's pretty uncommon that you get something else useful with it. You know what I mean? So, I, I'm actually going to give this a one because... It actually doesn't do anything otherwise. Like, you need that entire specific setup. And I've been kind of thinking this is with Chaos Shuffle in my head. Doesn't he give the buff to teammates too? I guess it does. Oh, that's a global effect too. I forgot it does that now. Okay, fine. That's a two. Never mind. Because, yes, yeah, someone probably has an aura perk. I, for I forgot that's a global thing now. Shit, sorry. 
I thought that only affected you. My bad. Okay. Um, overcome. I think overcome is probably a four. Against basically any killer without a one-shot, it's going to give you pretty consistent value every single time, but one-shot killers can just ignore your perk entirely, so that's why it's not a five. That's good. Almost always good value. Uh, overzealous. It's actually not too bad. But it depends what you're going against. Like, if you break a hex with this shit, you're doing gens way faster. It's really nice. But you also could give them Pentimento, and you also are spending time breaking a totem, and you also are risking that you're not going to get hit before you can repair a generator. So... Uh, the battle is, is, is two to three for me. Doesn't Pentimento feed it too? It does, but the benefit is, you know, you get 20% here versus a 30% slowdown for him, for everybody, so. Eh. I'm going to say, uh, eh, it's just, I think it's a two. You can make an argument for three, and I wouldn't I wouldn't be mad about it, but I'm going to say it's two. Uh, parental guidance. Um, surprisingly decent, depending on the map. I, I consider any perk that lets you lose the chase entirely to be extremely impactful. I think it's a bit more than a two. I, I'm leaning towards three. Because if you're on, like, a, a map with any sort form of, like, obstruction and you are, you know, behind a corner and you vacuum back into the stun and then you just fuck off somewhere, like, it's... It's pretty good. A lot of killers ignore pallet these days. Yeah, that's also a good point, too. I'd say half the killers in the game... Well, it's not that they're immune to pallet stuns, it's that they're more resistant to it. Like, you know, we say Huntress doesn't get pallet stun because she throws hatchets, but that's not true. You can always run past a pallet and then vacuum back into it. You can still stun these killers, it's just harder. Works with head-on or DS, too. Also true, yeah. Um, I'm going to give it a three. Just because it might actually just straight up lose you. Or it might just... Why, why are you doing that? Stop that. Why are you doing that? <laughs> okay, that was weird. I'm going to give it a three. Uh, pharmacy is... I mean, it does let you self-reset somewhere if you find a chest, so I'm going to say it's a two, but it's it's not very good anymore. The, the requirement that they added is stupid. Yeah, it's just... I, I would say uh, pre, pre-nerf, pre it was probably a three, and then when green medkits were how they used to be, it was a four, but now it's... Yeah, it got nerfed, and then medkits got nerfed, so it's, it's not very good anymore. Uh, plot twist. I feel like... This is probably a three or four. Because you can pretty much always use it per match, you know what I mean? At least you can just heal yourself. Um, for memes, it's a seven. So one of my favorite things about Plot Twist is it ignores things like Deep Wound. It ignores uh, Hemorrhaged and Mangled. Um, it makes you completely silent. You can actually drop Chase with it sometimes, depending on how far away or how much distance you make. You can hide in uh, bushes and stuff like that you can force yourself down on a pallet and then force the killer to pick you up because now you're down on a self-reviving pallet i think plot twist has an insanely large amount of uses so i'm gonna give it a four it's actually not a meme perk it's actually just very good um oh yeah angry bunny if you use it like an idiot then it's free for the killer but i'm talking about using it correctly plunder's instinct is probably a two Niche uses, I guess, but. You say you Actually, can heal yourself? My team turns into vultures trying to pick me up from cross map when I down myself and I <laughs> Thank you, Dark. I'm actually going to say, um. Hot take. I'm going to say Plunder's Instinct is actually a one in solo queue. I would say the amount of time you spent running around opening chests is worse than if you just sat on a gen and did not just didn't even interact with the perk whatsoever. Yeah, for looting builds, sure, but if you get that it's in Chaos Shuffle, I, it, you probably are better off not even touching the chest to begin with. 
Uh, new poised. Um, pretty good, consistent aura reading. The scratch marks thing has always been sort of a meme. It's whatever. But that's very consistent aura reading. And you can get the aura reading whenever you want. It lets you see the killer at the start of the match. It lets you immediately know what the killer is. Or it tips you off that it's a stealth killer. Which is very useful. I think new poise is probably a three. Just little things like that, that knowing, oh shit, I can't see the killer, it's a Myers or it's a Wraith. It, you're going to be more prepared for that now, so that can impact the match early. Uh, potential energy, I would say, is the definition of a niche use. It's not useless. There's a couple of times you can, like, on Forgotten uh, Ruins, you could go downstairs, repair some of a gen, shit out some of it up top, but it's held back a lot by the fact you're losing it if you get hit, so not very good. Uh, power struggle by itself. I'm going to give it a two. No further discussion. Premonition is pretty fucking bad. It's a one or a two. I'm, uh, I'm honestly going to say it's a one. I think Premonition is one of the worst perks in the game. It's terrible. Um, prove Thyself is a bait, in my opinion. But it does have uses for, like, you know, grouping up on, like, Gallows Gen first on Dead Dog. So I, I'm not going to say it's useless, but... The fact that you have to group it up in solo queue, I think it's probably just a two. Yeah, exactly. In solo queue, I think it's a two. If you got a team that you can coordinate with, I can see it being a bit better. But in solo queue, I think it's a two. You pretty much don't even want to group up at all in solo queue. Um, Quick and quiet. Quick and quiet is pretty good. Not insanely impactful, but occasionally it's one of those moments where the killer's like, wait, what shit did they vault? Where'd they go? Shit. Okay, there he is. And that little bit of hesitation can be very good. And you can pretty much always use it every game. So I'd, I'd say a three is fair for that. The impact is not super amazing, but it's it's pretty consistent. Um, Quick Gambit. New Quick Gambit. Uh, It's global now. I'd say in solo queue, New Quick Gambit is like a three or four, maybe. Again, not know or knowing where to not take chases is very good. And then you get 5% repair speed, which is going to save each survivor, you know, four or five seconds on a gen. It's not crazy. I think three, sir. It's pretty decent now, actually. Uh, reactive healing. I'm kind of mixed about this one. I feel like it's... I, well, you do typically get value from it. It's just... Does that really change much? Because you're still not fully healed. You still need to top yourself off after that, which means you need a med kit or another teammate. And then at that point, all you've done is save yourself a little bit of time. Hemorrhage counters it completely. Yeah. Two's fair. I agree. Reassurance. Um, this requires a killer to pretty hard camp, which is not incredibly common. It's more like killers tunnel more than camp nowadays. Um... I feel like it's a three. I don't think it's a five. I, I really don't think it's a five. Doesn't it give you 100 seconds now? No? What the fuck? Oh, oh, you mean pl plus the 70. Plus the 70. Okay. I'm trying to think. I'm trying, like, when I'm thinking internally, I'm thinking the amount of times that I, I I don't really camp much, so I I don't I don't think reassurance is that impactful. But I guess yeah. All right, I'll I'll, I'll trust you guys more. Um, fish perk. Repressed alliance. Oh, actually, though, that's a. Is it, is it a one or a two? <laughs> Fish perk is literally a meme. <laughs> it's so fucking bad. <laughs> it technically can be used, I guess. It does meet the criteria. You could, in 100 games, actually fuck with the killer's head. <laughs> Fine. Repressed Alliance. Um, I think that's the definition of niche use as well. I don't think it's a three. I think in solo queue, you're probably going to fuck people over more than it helps. But if you see the killer coming and you prevent the pop or something, it's nice. So it's not useless. Residual Manny. Why did I say that? 
Um, it just lets them not see their gens for a little bit. It has a use. Not being able to see gen ors as killer is surprisingly annoying, but... Eh. Not very useful. The killer doesn't remember the map. Well, the generators are random. Just because you know the map doesn't mean you know where the gens are. Unless that's a static map, you know? Uh, resilience, I'd say, is probably a 3 to a 4. Faster vaulting is huge. Um, the repair speed is nice. It saves you like 8 seconds on a gen, which is certainly usable. Mm. Resilience is not that good, I'm sorry. Well, that's what I'm saying. It's a 3 or 4. It's definitely not a 5. I'm going to say it's a 3. I think 3 is very resilient. The numbers aren't that crazy. Back when you had like that in Spine Chill, the vault build was pretty nuts, but... Uh, Resurgence. I think Resurgence is a 4 or 5, legit. I, I, my brain is telling me 4 here. Because there are there are times like uh, with... If you got Hemorrhage or something, it's going to be way worse. But um, Resurgence basically just gives everybody else will make it. So I think 4 is fair. Uh, rookie Spirit. I don't know what this does. <laughs> Uh, three skill checks. Or is regressing gens revealed to you and they stop regressing? Oh, that's... I guess that's kind of okay information. It has a use. It's not very good, but it has a use. That's a two. Um, saboteur. Possible hot take. I think sabotaging in solo queue is a terrible idea. For, for, for solo queue, I'm going to say it's a two. I'm sa If you're in a coordinated group, I think it's a lot better. But in solo queue, it's... It's pretty rare you're going to get good value from it, so I have to rate that lowly. Um, Scavenger is only good with one specific build. It's literally good with one build. Other than that, it's pretty fucking bad. Thanks, Ots, by the way. Don't you thank Ots me. The original version of this perk was fucking busted. <laughs> I'm sorry. It was insanely broken with a Commodious. It was stupid. I completely agree with him. I think they just over-nerfed it. Yeah, you basically... This is the Commodious, Swivels, Hyperfocus, Stakeout, Scavenger. It's like a 1.5 to me. Again, because of that build... Well, no. If we're doing Chaos Shuffle, you're not going to get all that build. So, yeah, I'll, I'll give it a 1. But with that build, it's actually kind of okay. Because you can force yourself to get way more skill checks. Um, Skeen Partneri uh, is pretty bad. But it has a use, so too. It gets you killed so often. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I can. But it has a use. We have to, we have to follow the code. Uh, second wind is actually pretty good. Anything that passively heals you is really nice. You're not always guaranteed to get value from it, though, so I think three is fair. Self-care, um, despite the memes, is not a useless perk. Sometimes you are in a scenario where you need to reset very far away, and even if it takes you 40 seconds, it's still better than not. It's a two or a three for me. If I was Japanese, it'd be 26. You gotta remember solo queue, too. Yeah, I feel like it bumps it up a little bit more. Especially if you happen to get, like, botany knowledge with it. Or uh, Strength and Shadows or whatever. It's actually really good. I'm going to say three. Just because if anything, yeah, it's consistent. Self-preservation. Um, Survivor suit under basic attack within 60 meters. Wait, what? What is the point of that? <laughs> this is literally the rat perk. <laughs> it's fucking terrible. It's actually a one. Ugh. I, I, don't, I didn't even know what that perk was. <laughs> I guess because I've never seen anyone use it. Uh, slippery meat. <sighs> niche scenario. It's a two in my opinion. Very niche. Half the time it'll give you actually pretty good value. The other half you just kill yourself. So I'd say it's a two. Uh, small game. Again, very niche, but on totem heavy builds, it can be pretty useful on maps that are confusing. Um, smash hit. It's probably a three for exhaustion perks. When you get to use it, it's super nice. But again, half the killers in the game are resistant to getting pallet stunned at the very least. So I'd say three is fair. Soul Survivor is not a useless perk. It's a good solo queue rat perk. So I'll give it a two. 
Mm -mm, it's not a one. It has a use. It's actually very good if you're trying to do like a solo queue escape streak. It's actually pretty decent. So, uh, Solidarity is pretty good since they buffed it. I'd say that's probably... Eh, but you have to be injured too. It's, it's a two or three for me. What do you guys think? It is a good reset perk, yeah. Just use botany knowledge. This would solidarity would still save you more time. If you had two people to heal. Yeah, I'm, I'm like 2.5, which I've been rounding up all my rounding, so. That's a very generous three, in my opinion. Uh Soul Guard. Pretty niche. Um, but the effect it has is very strong. I just watched Zubat the other day. He went against a uh a spirit with Noed and it the spirit having no ed lost her the game because he had soul guard. Uh, but it's 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 very specific. It's extremely powerful, but very specific. There's like a bunch of different categories. There's like low consistent value, um, and then there's like extremely good value but not consistent. So I I have to actually give it a two just because it's very very uncommon that you actually get to benefit from it. You know. Uh, specialist. I don't like this perk. The side quest you have to do is just too much. Again, it has a use. Mini BMP effect, but not very good. Spine chill is fucking dog shit. It's the one now, right? <laughs> Spine chill is just worthless. Um, Sprint burst, I think, is a five. It will pretty much always benefit from Sprint Burst every game, no matter what. It's a pretty safe five. Uh, Stakeout is... Without a without a synergistic build, pretty low value. That's, I think it's a two. With a build, it's like a four. But we're talking Chaos Shuffle. Eh, not super great by itself. Um, Still Sight... Ores of any, uh, the killer of any chest and generators in 24 meters location revealed when you stand still. Eh, situationally useful on maps like Midwitch and Larry's. That's alright. Not very good, though. Uh, Streetwise, again, situational in Chaos Shuffle. I don't think it's that amazing. But if you bring in, like, you know, a med kit or a toolbox or something, it can give you a bit more of a benefit. I don't think it's a three. Most people bring items. Yeah, but like, what do you, what is the actual effect that's going to have in a med kit that might give you like half another heal? And on a toolbox, it'll give you, you know, a couple more seconds, which is nice. It's good if you bring in like a commodious toolbox. That's basically it. <laughs> I don't know. I think it's very specific. I'm more inclined to give it a two than a three. Just because most people bring items doesn't mean it's going to change anything. Whether you end the game with, you know, 40% of your med kit or 20% of it, who did to whatever, it doesn't change anything. I'm giving it a two. Again, with specific builds, it can be very good, but. Uh, strength in Shadows is pretty decent. It's a good reset perk, in my opinion. I think it's a three. Nope. Uh, slightly more useful, but still pretty nope. It actually at least has a tangible effect. Uh, Technician is a one. That perk is actually de de that's detrimental to have. Tenacity is um, pretty good, actually. But you have to be slugged for it to have value. By itself, without anything else, it's a two or a three. When you combine it with other perks, it becomes very good. But by itself, it's probably a two. Slugging's pretty common. Yeah, but without any of their perks, it just saves you a little bit of time because you can get a bit safer. It's it's not that impactful by itself. This is not happening. is pretty much only good on one build. It is good. It's extremely good for the hyperfocus build, but really for no other reason. That's like a 1.5 for me. I can't say it almost never has any tangible effect. It 
by my own criteria, this has to be two because it has an effect. It's just a very shitty effect. Just hit skill checks. Yeah, just hit skill checks, forehead. Just never miss, ever. Um, troubleshooter. Troubleshooter's okay. I like the aura reveal when you drop a pallet. It's nice. I don't typically use this perk, so I'm not, like, super familiar with it. I feel like I'm gonna go to you guys more. My brain is telling me three. It tells you where to not take the killer? Yeah, that's good. It's a pretty even split between threes and fours. When you drop a pallet, uh, pallet you're running away, and you know exactly where the killer is anyway. Yeah, but if there's, like, a different route around the loop to take, it'll give you a bit of a heads up. I I I'm going to say three. I don't think it's a four. Uh, Unbreakable. Can single-handedly win the match, but it's also a pretty niche scenario. I'm going to say it's a four just because of the power alone. I would say probably no perk in the entire game has cost me more matches than Unbreakable. But... It's very uncommon for that exact scenario to happen, you know what I mean? But the effect it has is very, very good. Uh, up the Annie is pretty much a one. That's a awful perk. Uh, Urban Evasion against, like, Huntress and, like, Deathslinger. It's useful sometimes. Um, Vigil is pretty good. By itself, though, even nearby, it's a two or a three for me. You guys can remember, this is solo queue, chaos shuffle. If you get vigil, how's that going to help you? It's not team-wide, though. It's an aura. It's a very small aura, too. I think for solo queue, chaos shuffle, this is a two. The AoE is too small. You basically have to be just doing a gen with another person for them to benefit. If it was a bigger AoE, I, I think it'd be a three, but it's very tiny. Works against killer perks too. Yeah, I'm aware. I'm aware. I just still don't think it's really going to change that much most of the time. Get rid of broken or exposed or stuff earlier. Yeah, but how, how much does that ever actually affect? Like, when is the last time you got hit with make your choice or something and then you only live because you had vigil? Like, that is such a specific scenario. I know it does work. It has a lingering effect, too. Yeah, I know, but it's it's still, you have to be right next to someone for the effect to actually start happening. Three times, and I, I counted all of them in my journal. I don't know. I, I, I think Vigil is useful, but... Eh. I'm trying to think of all the killers that apply Hindered. for exhaustion perks yeah but this is chaos shuffle it's not even likely you'll get an exhaustion perk i'll i'll be generous just because i don't know fuck it uh visionary um it's okay i mean it just gives you some information not very impactful but some information's okay uh wake up blah, 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 makeup uh wake up everyone memes on this perk says it's low key op I don't think it's that good. I think it's pretty bad, actually. The effect is it saves you, like, a couple of seconds on opening a gate. It's pretty rare that that'll change the outcome of the match. Uh, we'll make it, on the other hand. That is quite good. I'd say that's probably a four. You're not always going to be able to heal the person because the killer might be coming back, but even if the killer does come back, if they're more than, you know, eight seconds away, you can get the heal off, so that's pretty good. We'll make its very, very consistent value. Uh, new We're Gonna Live Forever is, I would say... Four to five. Nah. I'd say it's a four. Because you need to be... I'd, I'd, I'd say it's a four. It's extremely good. But it's not always going to give you value. Uh, Wicked is... Um, used correctly, Wicked is pretty good. Because you can force a chase to end down in the basement. And then you're going to get just a free auto from that. So I, I say a three is fair there, yeah. Windows, I mean, that's just a straight up five. That's, of course, a five. It is never not going to give you value. Uh, Wiretap is pretty niche, but hilarious. I say it's a two. We did it! We did all the survivor perks.
All right, now we got to average these. Fuck, how do I excel? Does anyone remember? Uh, average. What is that? 148. So E3 e to E148. Oh, fuck, what is it? Yeah, okay. Yeah. That one, exactly. 2.479 is the average value of a survivor perk. Neat. The killer we go. It's <laughs> completely right in the middle. It literally rounds up to 2.5. Um, now let's do killer. Can I do median as well? Is there a function for median? I'm so bad at Excel. Can you just do median? Same thing. That was an E3. 148. Median of two. Yeah, I, I, I gotta teach myself Excel. It's such a useful program. All right, time for killer perks. Number one, a nurse's call. Um... I'd say it's pretty good value a lot of the time. I'd say it's pretty consistent. It's not like amazing and you can often just hear them healing once you get close enough, but sometimes it tips you off to something you wouldn't have noticed, so it's pretty good. All right, uh, agitation by itself, um, pretty much always consistent value. The impact is not that amazing unless you have like skirt chokes or you have some other thing going on with it, but it's pretty much always gonna give you some value. So I'd say that leans toward the higher end. Um, Alien Instinct. Um, that's the aura reveal, and then they get Oblivious. Eh. That's a two or a three to me. I think the, the Oblivious is nice, but I feel like in terms of aura reveal perks, there's just better. There's just better options. I don't know. That's not that great. Um, Awakened Awareness. I can't say it's had no use before. I've had it be useful a couple of times, but... Awaken is not a four. It's a two or a three. Sometimes has an impact on the match. Yeah. I think that tracks for a three. Um, I just thought about something for the outcome of this. <laughs> what do I draw from the, like, what do I draw from the results here? Because if, for example, let's say survivor is higher than killer. What is the conclusion we draw from that? That means that the mode is more survivor sided. Is that the conclusion that we would draw, uh, that, that, that we would draw? While we're doing averages, the amount doesn't matter. Chaos Shuffle RNG favors survivors. I'm curious about the 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 median too, because there might be less bad perks overall, but overall the average is different. You know what I mean? I don't know. I, uh, let's keep going. I'm curious to see. Um. Anyway, uh, bamboozle. That is probably a four. You can pretty much always get value from bamboozle. I wouldn't say it's a five. It basically just locks off God windows and that's it. That that's a good point. Survivors have more chance to roll on the perks as well, overall, yeah. Not when the game exists. Okay, that's one map. Can you know thing on some maps where windows are close? I think properly used bamboozle is it just without a doubt an extremely good perk. I don't know how you could argue against that. Barbecue and chili is it's just good or reading. It lets you know where to take another chase. Um, which I guess helps. Very often has an impact on the match. Yeah, that fits. Damn, Killer's a lot higher than Survivor so far. Okay, uh, batteries included. My hot take is that this perk is not very good. 
This is a, this is a three at best. Probably more towards a two. I, I don't think it's that good. But haste, you go faster. You got boot boot icon. I don't I don't think it's that good. I agree with the two. Uh, beast of prey, big boy number one. Let's go. Uh, bitter murmur. Eh, that's a two. That's in terms of the ore reading perks. That's pretty weak. Uh, blood echo. This is a new blood echo. Echo survivor. All their injured survivors are exhausted hemorrhage. What's... What did they change about this? Am I stupid? Oh, it had a cooldown. It had a cooldown. Right, right, right. Eh, the cooldown didn't matter much. You typically weren't hooking people more than once every... That often anyway, so... Um, it's, like, good on, like, Legion and... No. Yes? Yes. What's the one that does Oblivious? All the, uh, injured survivors get Oblivious. I always get these confused every fucking time. Hysteria, thank you. I always get those two confused. I feel like that one's better. Meh. That's not great. Especially in Chaos Shuffle where people might not even have exhaustion perks. Uh, Blood Warden is the definition of niche, but funny when it happens. Uh, Bloodhound, I would argue, is a one. That pretty much never changes anything. Brutal Strength. Um, pretty consistent value, pretty small time save, but it's, 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 it's pretty decent. Uh, call a brine. Oh, how you, you've fallen. The ore reading is surprisingly nice. I'd say two is fair. Corrupt intervention. That is, that's a five. That's pretty much always going to give you value. Well, actually, no. It doesn't always give you value. I'm gonna, I'm still going to give it a 5, but it doesn't always give you value. Actually, should I give it a 5? Because if you get a middle map spawn, Corrupt Intervention fucking sucks. It does nothing. But the, the important thing to focus on is even if you down someone within 30 seconds and you lose the remaining 90 seconds... Typically, it still causes the survivors to filter to the other gen, so they still waste time, so. Eh, five is fine. Okay, uh, Chorophobia. Honestly, I think that's a two. That's very situational. It's got to be on an anti-healing build, specifically. Cootie Gross. Pretty much always gives you good value. Um, that's probably a four. It's not super game-changing, but it's, it's, it's good. Uh, Cruel Limits. That's when the generator's completed, right? The block... That's super niche. That's not great. Um, Dark Arrogance. I don't think this perk is good. The fact that you have to be such a little bitch with pallets, I hate. I wouldn't say it's a one, because sometimes the vault speed can uh, absolutely confuse people. Two for Chorophobia is insane? Why? I mean, if you're on, like, the game or something, sure. I don't know. I, I don't think Chorophobia is that good. You can also just, you know, like, not heal in a Stereo Radius or something. You get value without knowing it? I mean, I'm saying that for, like, from the survivor perspective. I, I don't know. I, I really don't think it's that good. Uh, skill checks are ridiculous. No, they're not. <laughs> they're just a little bit faster. Um, Dark Devotion is... You can bamboozle people sometimes. Pretty good. But you also have to get in position to actually hit the uh, obsession. But it can result in pretty pretty good snowballs. I'm actually going to give it a 3 just because of the snowball potential. Like, if you walk up on some people as, as Bubba and you just have no terror radius, you just win. So, it's actually pretty decent. Uh, Darkness Revealed. I don't think this perk is very good. It's good on, like, Trickster and Huntress, where you're going to be looking in lockers anyway. But it's so map-dependent. Like, you use this on, like, Larry's or something, yeah, you're seeing people everywhere. But if you use it on, like, I don't know, like, some swamp map, you just, it doesn't do anything. I'm, I feel like I'm leaning more towards a 2 than 3, unless you're playing, like, Huntress or someone. I see a lot of 3s, and I'm not sure I agree with that. 
I, I legit think this is a two. I, I feel like it doesn't really do much when I get it. Uh, Dead Man Switch. The new Dead Man Switch. 50 second block and one gen when they leave it. That's that's pretty decent. I think new Dead Man Switch is pretty consistent value, actually. You'll soon be able to tap the 1% gen with this perk <laughs> and make it useless. <laughs> Thank you, Dark Magician. Yeah, it, it's a 3 or 4 for me. I'm not 100% sure. Because they can always just get off the gen and go to a different one, but it wastes their time because they can't commit to finishing that, so... I don't know. It's a three or four. My gut is telling me three, but it's like a very strong three. Three is still good. I think four, it shows you what's being worked on too. You've convinced me it's a four. <laughs> All right. Uh, deadlock. Deadlock is pretty much a five, I think. It just never doesn't give you value. I hate Deadlock too, but I can't deny that it is a very good slowdown perk. Uh, Deathbound. This is the new Deathbound, right? And now it lasts permanently until they're hooked again? New Deathbound, I feel like this is probably a 3. It still requires a specific interaction of healing, but the Perma Oblivious is pretty nuts on some killers. I'd say 3 is fair. Uh, Deerstalker. I feel like nowadays it's a 2. Back in the day when you had nothing else better to use, Deer Stalker was nice, but it's it's been power crept a lot. Uh, Discordance is probably a three. You usually do get value from it every game. It's not super impactful if you have good map knowledge, but it does give you value. That's good. Um, dissolution. Dissolution, depending on your killer, can be very useful. I feel like Dissolution is probably a 3 or a 4. Like, it can just straight up make you die no matter what, <laughs> given, given, like, the right scenario and the right killer. They can counter Dissolution a lot with Slow Vaults. Yeah, but if you're Slow Vaulting an Unsafe Pal and the killer's going back and forth, you're just going to get grabbed. It's pretty killer dependent, but it's like a 3.5 for me. I'll round it up to a 4. I think Dissolution's actually a very good perk. Uh, distressing is... It's a one, even on killers that have a specific build for it. It's still a super shitty perk. Uh, dominance is... That's the or, or the totem protection, right? By itself, it's fucking terrible. So I'm going to give that a... I feel like I want to give that a one. Because we're talking chaos shuffle randomized. That's... Not even niche, that's just nothing. <laughs> I'm actually just getting it in one. That's a really bad perk. Uh, Dragon's Grip. I'm gripping. Two or a three for me. I'm actually going to give this a three because if you catch someone off guard with this, it just basically removes the chase entirely. It's pretty good. Much better on like stealth killers. Yeah, it's a very long exposed. Uh, Dying Light, I don't think is very good. I think by the time you start getting Dying Light value, you've already won the game. So it doesn't really matter. Uh, Enduring. I'd say Enduring is probably a four. You usually benefit from it, but a lot of the time it doesn't... It just gets you out of the stun a bit faster and you get into the chase a bit quicker. But on certain killers, it's busted. It's a five, but I'd say average is four. Because pretty much everyone always wants to stun you, which means you're pretty much going to get to use it every single game. Not to mention the Enduring double hit is like, oh, one of the best feelings in the game. Uh, new Eruption, I would say, is a 2 or a 3. On a specific gen kicking build, it's actually probably a 3, but randomized in Chaos Shuffle. Yeah, <laughs> Old Eruption was a fucking 20. It's a 2 or a 3 uh, for me. I'll oh, we'll give it a 3. It's not bad. Uh, fire up. It does something. <laughs> um, forced hesitation. It's pretty. It's pretty situational. Depending on the killer, it can be very good or nothing. I feel like on average, I want to give this a two. Yeah, for chaos shuffle, I want to give this a two. 
It's just going to make a couple of survivors poop their pants. Do the poop walk. Uh, forced penance in solo queue is pretty uncommon value as well. Franklin's. It's... I feel like I want to give it a three. Because you do typically get value from it, but sometimes the value is bad. <laughs> because sometimes you remove a flashlight and then they're not going to waste time flashlight saving anymore. And then they just do gens, which makes it do worse. <laughs> actually, I, I, that's a good point for a chaos shuffle. <laughs> for chaos shuffle, I think it's actually a four. It's a good point, actually. Uh, Friends to the end, I think is pretty good. It's three or four. I, I feel like I never get the, the expose hit on this. But the information it gives is pretty nice. And if you're a fast killer, you actually can benefit from the expose. The one thing I'll, like, I will say, though, if the obsession is nearby, it's it sucks for the obsession. I, I actually think I'm, I'm going to give this a four. The fact that it's got two effects is really nice. Uh, Furtive Chase is... I mean, uh, I feel like it's a good, too. It's, it's got a couple of uses, but it's it's better than it used to be. But uh, Game of Foot... It's related to the Skull Merchant, so it's a zero. It's got too many requirements. It has a use, but it has too many requirements to set up. I don't like it. Uh, Gearhead is pretty consistent or reading. Now, will that change anything? It'll let you know where to go to take a chase. Honestly, I feel like that might be even before. Because that's pretty consistent value. And it Pretty much always lets you know where to take a chase, even if you don't know where to go. I, I think I want to actually give Gearhead a 4. It's, it's, it's a very, very consistent perk. Uh, genetic Limits. I'd say the new Genetic Limits is probably a 3? It's really good for, your, like, your first chase with the Survivor. Like, on a first chase, it's like a 5, but then once they're injured, it's not really going to do anything anymore. Exhaustion can be so rare. The chances of having zero exhaustion perks at all entirely in the game is very low in Chaos Shuffle. You're usually going to have, like, at least one. Yeah, it got upgraded from, like, a one to a three, in my opinion. Eh, I, yeah, I, I think Chaos Shuffle, though, does take it down a bit to a two. Um, Grim Embrace is very good. It doesn't always give value, but to me, that's, like, a four or five. Sometimes you uh, you just can't find that fourth guy or something and you don't really get the benefits until the game's already over and the outcome wasn't changed, so. Uh... Let me read my own definitions again. Always use an impactful every match. Yeah, no, I, I feel like that fits, that fits a five. Um, Blood Favor. Blood Favor is actually very good, but it's, um, a Hex perk. Three or four. That's it, because again, by itself, no Undying Protection, nothing like that. It's probably a three in Cash Shuffle. If you have a build to protect it, then it becomes a four, I think. I think three is fair. Uh, crowd control. This is the new one. Uh, new crowd control, again, say, I feel like same deal. Very powerful effect, but unprotected. <laughs> unprotected hex. Oh, 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 34, by the way. Um, devour hope. I feel like devour hope, again, is an unprotected hex, but the effect is so powerful that it just transcends. It just transcends everything, so I have to bump it up one more. But again, still without an Undying Protection, it's just... It could also do nothing, so... Uh, Face of Darkness, I think, is not good at all. There's like two builds it's good on. Uh, Haunted Grounds, very luck-based perk. I'm going to give that like a 2.5 and average it up to a 3 because sometimes it can straight up win you the game in the first 10 seconds of the match. Sometimes it does nothing. Uh, Lullaby is a 2 at best. Uh, Noed is probably as close to a f five. It's a four or five. 
No one ever breaks all the totems before the game is over. No one ever does that. So if you get to end, the, the thing is you have to get to end game. So if I was taking a point off for like, you know, adrenaline and things like that, I feel like I should take off a point for Noed as well. Because I feel like what Noed actually does is basically gives you one free down at the end, which can be huge. But it's not like the guarantee. It's, it doesn't just win you the game outright. And considering you can see the totem now. Oh god, what did I do? Okay. Uh. Shit. What happened? Oh, okay. Um, Pentimento. In Chaos Shuffle, it's a two. In a Hex Build, it's a five. Yeah, Chaos Shuffle, it's pretty pretty worthless, though. Average of three? No average needed. This is for Chaos Shuffle. The five is irrelevant. Um, Plaything. Plaything is pretty good value consistently, I'd say. I'd say it's a three or a four. Most people will waste time breaking their totem, which is just going to give everyone a little side quest. I think Plaything's a four. And if they don't, then having no Terry is huge. Retribution is a two. Actually, I think Retribution and... Eh. I feel like in Chaos Shuffle, that might be a one. Mm, if they have a boon, now it has a use. If they have like a boon or something, it's... Not worthless, but it's pretty bad. Uh, Rune's pretty good. I think Rune's a three. Pretty good slowdown, but can go away immediately. Third seal against solo queue. I think it leans more towards two than three. Uh, Crazy Monkey King, thank you for the four months. Appreciate that. Thrill the Hunt by itself. Surprisingly might waste some time, so it's not useless, because someone will see a, a totem and then break it. Um, two can play is pretty bad, but hilarious. But it has a use. Undying, sort of the same thing as through all the hunts. I'm still going to give it a 2 because it gives the residual aura reading. Do can play so shit. I know, but it still has an effect. Wretched Fate is... You don't really need support for that. It just sort of works. The 2 or a 3. I'd say it's probably... Without, like, Pentimento to back it up once they break it, I think it's more like a 2. Like, it's nice, but the obsession doesn't necessarily have to be doing gens. They could be getting saves or healing or getting chased or... It's not even a guarantee that even if it stays up all game, it'll do anything, you know? I don't think it's that great. Porter is fucking worthless. Well, unless you're... No, it doesn't work with Pyramid Head or uh, Pinhead anymore. I forgot they changed that, right? It's not a special... Yeah, no, never mind. Um, Hubris... Depends on the killer. Some killers can get super good value, but most are not really going to get value out of this. It expires too quickly. Human greed is pretty bad. But it does have a use. Uh, hysteria. I think Hysteria, given the right killer, is like a 4, but on everyone else it's a 2 or a 3. What do you guys think? If you get this on like Plague or Legion, it's insanely good, but that's pretty pretty specific. Three really? Hey. Right. Fair enough. I'm all ears. Pretty consistent value. Not super amazing, but if they're at a tile that they can't leave and they have to continue looping it, it gives you pretty good advantage on that chase. I think it's a three. Uh, Infectious Fright, pretty good information perk. Pretty much always going to at least see a couple of screams a game. Let you know where to slug or not. Pretty good. Insidious. Um, I mean, it, it has a use. <laughs> uh, Iron Grasp. Getting people to basement, it has a use. Iron Maiden, um... 
Depends on the killer, but for the most people, it's a, it barely has a use. Going to reload killers? Yeah, I mean, but it's still way too niche to be a three, I think. Uh, knockout is... Depending on the killer, it can be pretty good. Wait, is it basic attack only? I forget. No, it's basic attack only. Eh, never mind. Languid Touch. This is the Crow Exhaustion perk. That's actually pretty good. I think three is fair for Languid. I feel like three is okay. Uh, Lethal Pursuer is... I mean, that has to fit the definition of a five. It will never not help the beginning of your game be better. Always impactful every time. Uh, new leverage is surprisingly somehow still not that great. It does counter will we'll make it, though, I guess. I still think new, even new leverage is a two. I don't think it's very good. You shouldn't heal under hook immediately anyway. Uh, Lightborn, um, I think is a two. It has a use, but the use is pretty bad. Machine learning, um, would they change? Oh, you don't have to kick a gen to start the perk first. It's okay. It's not a four, there's no way. It's a two or a three. It's pretty fun, but I can give it a three. Especially since it only requires one gen to kick now. Uh, Mad Grit, God bless you, but... <laughs> uh, make your choice. Honestly, if, if you play around it, you can pretty consistently get make your choice value. Now, it might not be beneficial to your killer, so that takes some points off. But I'd say that's a pretty above average perk. Merciless Storm is pretty bad, but it has a use. Mindbreaker is pretty good. Pretty consistent value as well. Not incredibly impactful, but consistent value. I think a three is good. The nice info almost always. Yeah, but you can also just stop repairing. If you like you, if someone's hooking, and you need to see the Ori, just get off the gen for five seconds. Oh, there he is. Uh, monitor and abuse. I feel like monitor is slightly better than people think it is, because people's brains are accustomed to the the volume of terror radiuses, and this fucks with it a lot. I think it's probably a three. Yeah, monitor fucks with everybody. Because no one runs monitor. <laughs> uh, Nemesis, God bless you. It's a two. Pretty good combo with I other perks, though. Got the job. Nice, oink. Now you can stop <laughs> joining my lobbies. That's awesome, man. Congrats. Uh, no way out. That's pretty much a five. Always value. Uh, nowhere to hide. Pretty good value, I'd say. I think that's a three. You do have to kick gens, though, which is annoying. Uh, oppression is... I'd say buffed oppression is probably a three. You can usually get at least some passive aggression going across the map. I think it's worthy of a three. People are usually going to hit the skill checks, but even on gens that are not being touched, it's not bad. Uh, overcharge is pretty pretty bad now. Only works against babies. Uh, overwhelming presence is very niche, but... Sometimes it'll stop someone from having a single full heal from their med kit. Uh, play with your food, I think, is okay. I'd say it's probably a three. It does guarantee, like, a down on one person, but it takes a while to charge up. But it's it's fairly consistent value. I'd say pop is a four now. It used to be a five, but they nerfed it a bit. But pretty much always going to get value from it, and it's a very good slowdown. Uh, Predator... I mean, I, I don't even know what to put here because it's... I know they're not going to... I. Oh, wait, no. I'm thinking of... Never mind. I'm thinking of Sanchin. I don't know what to put for Predator. We're talking about new Predator. I think it's pretty decent information, actually. But it involves the, the, you losing chase. But you can also manipulate the chase to lose it on purpose. I, I'm going to give that a three because that's pretty good information. And you can actually control when that happens. Uh, Rancor is good information. Fuck one guy at the end, which can be pretty consistent, I guess. That's that's okay information. A little bit above average. Rapid Brutality is probably a... Th mm, then you lose Bloodlust, too. I actually think Rapid by itself is a 2. I don't think Rapid is a good perk, like, at all. 
except on a few killers, in which case it's very good. But losing Bloodlust is such a nasty downside on certain maps that have, like, chained together windows and stuff. Like, if you have, like, Rapid Brutality on Larry's, you are crying. It is miserable. But, yeah, there's, you know, like, unlike, you know, Larry, it's it's very good on certain killers. But on a lot of other killers, it's actually, I feel like it's almost detrimental. I I really don't like Rapid Brutality. The downside is massive. I, I, I don't know. Uh, remember me is close to being a good perk, but it's not because the obsession is not affected by the effect and it's niche to charge it up. Uh, say the best for last. It used to be like a four or five. I'd say probably more. It's like a two or a three now. Uh, I'll, I'll give it a three. It's much harder to mitigate stack loss now, but the effect when you charge it up is still very good. Certainly weaker than before though. Floods of Rage is pretty nice information. I'd say it's pretty consistent value, too. I don't think it's a 4. I think a 3 is fair. Gift of Pain is decent slowdown as well. Pretty consistent as well. I think it's not incredibly impactful, but it, you usually get to use it every game. Uh, Hangman's Trick is... I think might actually be a 1. Um, Shouldn't the way at lose a point because of the in-game requirement? That's why hope and not wear fars. Um... I, I get what you're saying, but not necessarily. Um, because the win conditions are different for killer and, and survivor. Like, for, for the killer, he can kill three people and still win. But survivor, the only way is if they escape. You know what I mean? So, like, it, it's because the objectives are different. It's hard to do a comparison like that, you know? You shouldn't compare them one-to-one -one like that. Monstrous Shrine. Every once in a while, people won't realize why the person's dying faster. Barely a two. Uh, pain Residence. That's a pretty solid five. Um, septic Touch. That is a one. Shadowborn. God, when's the last time you saw someone run Shadowborn? It has a use, but it's pretty bad. Uh, Shattered Hope, I would argue, is actually straight up one. Um, Sloppy Butcher. Pre-nerf, it's pretty much a 4 or 5. I would say post-nerf, it's a 3 or 4. It's pretty consistent value depending on your killer, but it it's not infinite anymore now, which is a huge downside. I think 3 is fair. High is good. I don't think it's a 4 anymore. You can just not heal for a little bit and then just get healed later. Whether they do a sloppy, it used to be a permanent mangle. Which is, you know, very impactful. Now it expires after a certain amount of time, so. Spies is uh, three. I think Spies is the fucking one. <laughs> no, it's useful in indoor maps. I think it's a two. It's pretty good in indoor maps, and that's about it. Uh, Spirit Fury by itself. Pretty not great. But not useless. Starstruck, depending on the killer, can be very good. I'd say on average, most killers, it's a, of medium benefit, I guess. Probably like a three. Uh, Strider. Honestly, I'm going to give Strider a one. Strider makes me actually play worse rather than better. Because it fucks with my hearing of distance and stuff like that. It actively d is a detriment to me, so I hate that perk. Uh, Superior Anatomy... I think I'm actually going to give us a three. You'd be surprised how often that just straight up gets you a hit if you, like, pretend you're not going to vault and then moonwalk and immediately go into a vault as they're walking back. That's pretty good. Uh, Surge is pretty consistent slowdown, but the number is pretty tiny. On indoor map, like on the game, it's a five, but on everywhere else, it's more like a 3.5 to a four. I think four is fair. Surveillance is good with, like, you know, rune and a couple of other things. I think for information, it's a two or a three. Um, two or three, what do you think? Surge is one of the most overrated perks. I agree. Most people think it's like an insanely good slowdown. I think it's just okay. Two, that's fine. But if you get a good map with Surge and you've got like a tight cluster of three gens, it's actually, it is pretty damn impactful. Uh, Thwack is 
I don't know. I feel like every time you use Thwack, you're already chasing the person that you're chasing, so it doesn't do much. It's good with breakable walls, and that's about it. Uh, Terminus is pretty good for making endgame a lot more dangerous, but you have to make it to endgame, and they also need to be injured. And they also might just make people leave because they can't safely save anymore. It's a, it's a 2 or a 3. It's like a 2.5 for me, and I, th I think we'll round it up to a 3. Uh, territorial. Not useless, but kind of a meme. Fanatophobia. It's good on a couple of killers. Pretty shit on everyone else. Thrilling Tremors. Pretty good information perk. Occasionally has a slowdown effect. I think that's a solid 3. Tinkerer is pretty consistent value. Pretty much every game. That's probably a 3 or a 4. You pretty much always use... There are times you don't get to use Tinker because you're already chasing someone and it triggers in a chase and you can't just leave the chase and... It really does depend on the killer and how much mobility you have. It's very true. Doesn't fit the definition of a 5? No, just because it activates almost every game or every game doesn't mean you're going to get value from it. Hiding your stain in a chase can help. Yeah, that's fair. It's like a 3.5. I'll round it up to 4. Um... Trail of Torment is pretty damn good in my opinion. I think Trail is a four. You can choose when you want to use it pretty much at any moment. It's not going to be good on, you know, again, like the three or four wide open maps, but a, a controllable, removable tear radius and also baiting people into that generator too is very good value in my opinion. Uh, ultimate Weapon. It's a Decent information perk now. It's not as good, but it's a two or a three. Let's give it a three. It used to be like a four or five, but uh unbound is I wanted to make that perk work, but it's not that great. I didn't know Link. That's tilting me. <laughs> we need to fix that. <laughs> what the fuck? There we go. Um, undone. This is basically good on just Doctor One. Eh, I, I think undone is as close to a one as you can get. Uh, unforeseen is, on the other hand, very good. I'm probably going to give that with Trail of Torment and give it a four. Unnerving Presence, very niche usage. Unrelenting, very nice uses, but it does have a use sometimes. But quite bad. Uh, Weave Attunement by itself. Eh, I mean, it's good for like toolboxes, things like that. I'd say by itself, it's still probably a three. With Franklin's, it's a four to five. Yeah, but you might forget that it has a separate effect when they consume their item, it drops automatically, you know? I'd say three is fine. Uh, Whispers, uh, man. In 2016, that's a 5, but now it's a, it's a 2. <laughs> I love Whispers too, but it's just so power crept. It's just not even close. Uh, New Zanshin, if it ships like this, is, is straight up a 5, I think. Or like a 4. I'm just going to put 5 now, assuming it ships like this, but I don't think it's going to ship like that. I think it's going to be nerfed. Um, Okay. That was a lot faster. There's just way more survivor perks, aren't there? Uh, it's gonna be... I'll just copy this. Eh. Make a histogram? I don't know how to make a histogram, bro. I can barely use fucking Excel. Uh, what was it? Three to... what? Three to 126. Son of a bitch. Interesting. Interesting, interesting. Killer side of game. Yeah, that's see, that's weird though, because th this conflicts with my opinion of of the of the mode.
It's going to be a two. Of course it's going to be a two. Oh, the, thank you. Thank you, Mihailo, buddy. Of course. That That is such a vital point. How the fuck did I think of that? So the individual killer perk is more important than the individual survivor perk. But there's 16 chances for you to get... Yeah, no, you, you, you're, you're completely right. I, I'm so stupid. There is vastly more of a chance for the survivors to get useful perks because there's just more of them. The killer perks are balanced with that in mind? Not really. They're not balanced in direct relation to the survivors because they have separate objectives. So these numbers are, I mean, we're basically looking at 2.7 versus 2.5 if we're rounding, which is pretty close. Can you show the number of 1s, 2s, and 3s, 4s, 5s? Yeah, um, fuck. How, how would I sort by that? I know there's a way to do it. Doesn't mean they have uh, more chances to get bad perks as well. Um, yes, but just simply having one... Just having one good perk is more impactful than having three other bad perks. Sort the columns by number. Again, I'm brain dead when it comes to Excel. How do I do that? Select column, then do insert chart. Uh. Chart. Ooh, neat. Numbers. <laughs> um... Now what do I do? <laughs> Again, I'm clueless. Right-click the column. Remove the average and medium rows. Oh, here, let me just move these, I guess. Is it ready to shift these over? Let's do this. Wait, fuck. This is going to fuck with my formula. Nar. I'm too stupid to do this. <laughs> <laughs> Game is too hard. I can just make this open for you guys if you want to just. Uh. Well, I don't want you to edit it. If I do this, can't you guys just like view it or something? You you can like make a copy of it and then then edit it yourself, right? No. How do you do that? How do you make it so you guys can copy it? No, you guys make a copy. You, you go to file and make a copy, but... Share is view only. Oh, oh, I see, I see. Okay, cool. Here we go. So, yeah. You guys can fuck with that and make some graphs and shit if you want. But it does appear that uh, the average killer perk is more impactful than the average survivor perk. Okay, I, I, I know the conclusion to make with this. The average killer perk is slightly more impactful than the average survivor perk. Um, however, you have four times as many chances to see and encounter an impactful survivor perk as you do an impactful killer perk. And I think that is the important distinction to make there. Because if you have three... Yeah, you are more likely to get a shitty survivor perk as well. Because there's 16 possibilities. But having one good perk and three shitty perks is better than having four okay perks. You know what I mean? I would much rather have like, you know, balanced landing and then like a bunch of other meme shit. Because you can make so many impactful plays with balanced landing. You as a survivor do not. The killer has a chance of the enemy survivors having more good perks. Yeah, I'm talking about the outcome of the match. You're right. It, this is not an individual survivor thing. It's more the outcome of the match. A lot of killer perks are useful, but they're just not that impactful over bringing slowdown. Yeah, but you can't look at it like that because a perk that leads to a quicker down leads to a quicker form of slowdown. Not every form of slowdown is just gen regression. If you can down someone fast because of a perk, that also is a form of slowdown. And in fact, a lot of the time, it's the best form of slowdown. Downing a survivor is the biggest slowdown in the game. And if you have perks that help you do that, that is just as good as having a pain resonance or something like that. Solo queue survivor, more chance to get bad teammates. Killer, you only get you. I mean, that that's just true of the entire game mode, yeah. 20 perk difference is quite big. There's a bigger, uh, there's more survivor perks by a pretty wide amount, yeah. I don't know, though. It's interesting to, to think about it like this, though.
if we go by again all this was very just you know emotion based and you know you feel like if a perk is impactful in a match there's no possible way to do this objectively it can't be done by anybody so um i i, I am i am pretty uh i'm pretty surprised that killer on average has slightly more impactful perks though because it feels like when i'm playing killer in Chaos Shuffle, I never have any impactful perks at all. You don't think Force Survivor changed the formula as much as some people think in here? See, that's the thing. I, I, I don't agree with that because, like I said, you still have more of a chance to encounter one of those perks that throws a wrench in your gears. You have a, you know, a 1 in 16 chant, whatever, to encounter just one unbreakable. And just that one unbreakable can com completely make you lose the game. So it doesn't matter that there's more bad perks. There's just more of them to begin with. I did not, Ethan. Winning as killer with no perks is harder than winning as survivor with no perks. Completely agree. I completely, completely agree. Which, you know, look, like, actually, this data supports that. Killer perks are more impactful. So not having any perks as killer is more detrimental than not having any perks as survivor. I mean, you can you just see that right there. That's that is clear as day. When you load into a match, the killer perks are the strongest factor in determining the match result outside of gameplay. I think the map is the most important thing. Followed by play style, then followed by perks. What do you think is harder, winning with no perks as killer or winning with bad perks as killer while trying to get value from them? If you go out of your way to throw the game to get value from bad perks, then obviously that's harder. Is percentage weight for getting each perk the same in Chaos Shuffle? Yes. It's as far as we know. It's completely random. Although I will feel like I sure get Territorial Imperative every game. <laughs> if you know how to loop, sure, no perks easy, but let's face the majority of survivors can't loop or do gens efficiently. Yeah, well then a lot of perks aren't going to save them either. If they're just not good at the game, they're not good at the game in the end. Either way, though, I think what we can draw from this is killer perks are more impactful, which means um, having, you know, less perk selection on killer is more, uh, is slightly more detrimental. But this is, you know, still interesting to see. I thought it was going to be more even. I mean, it is pretty even. It's 2.7 to 2.5, but still. Hi, buddy. Are you wide buddying right now? Yeah. <laughs> um, but overall, yeah, I don't know. I'm not really sure what conclusion to draw from this other than there are more uh, chances to encounter. Okay. If I had to have a, a closing summary statement, it would be there are slightly more impactful perks as killer, but the chance of encountering a impactful perk... Oh, I figured out how to word this. The chance of encountering an, uh, a more impactful perk as killer against survivor is higher than you as survivor going against a killer with impactful perks in Chaos Shuffle. Oh, that's how I wanted to word it. I could not think of it. Does that make sense? Or did I just ramble about absolute horseshit? Because <laughs> we've been doing this for three hours, but I, I think what I said just made sense. Okay. Okay, um, then it leads to the follow-up question, and here, here's the biggest point. If the multiplier of having four perks is obviously the biggest deciding factor here, what the fuck was the point of me making this video? 